your ASMR friend, just checking in on you. I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm going to do an ASMR ramble about games I've been playing in 2024. Now, not all of these games have been released this year, but it's just games I've been playing this year. It's not all of them, because I play a lot. But these are just more the noteworthy ones, the ones that I want to talk about a little bit more. And uh, I will probably forget things about what the games that I like. That's why it's a ramble, right? So I'm going to have to forgive myself. You're going to have to forgive me if I leave out something. How would you even know if I left out something that I should be talking about? You should. You should just. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your ASMR friends ramble about video games. I'm not insightful. This isn't like insider knowledge. You're not going to learn something new. We're just chilling, chatting, having a good time, hopefully. Well, without further ado, with a glorious introduction like that, let's start out with my personal game of the year. Now, just like my movie of the year, does that mean it should win game of the year? I don't know. It's above my pay grade, and I don't care. It's a game I enjoy, I have fun with, and I am talking about Helldivers 2. No other game makes you feel like you're in an action movie than Helldivers 2. Funnily enough, I never played the first game, and there was actually a game trailer for a game called Ark Raiders, which, fun fact, has not released. And then I caught wind of Helldivers 2, before it had released. So I put it on my radar, had it on my wish list, but I didn't buy it right away. I bought it like a week after, maybe a couple days after. Because I knew that it was more centric on co-op. And while I have a group of friends I love to play with, you know, I didn't want to play this game with randos. And I wasn't sure about the solo gameplay of it. And boy howdy, am I glad that I gave it a chance, jumped in. Because now ironically, I love playing the solo. It's my favorite game to play solo. I don't know if that's entirely true. It's one of my favorite ways to play is solo. Nowadays, I don't really jump in with randos. I might here and there on occasion. I'll play with friends that have it. But outside of that, I jump in solo. And I love it. So this game has nine, well, now ten difficulties. And what I love about it is that each level feels like a jump up. But for me, playing solo, you know, I'm not like, I'm not the hardcore. I, I don't want to get brutalized when I play games. So like Soul Likes, you know, those type of games, I'm not looking for that crazy challenge. But I also don't want it to be a cakewalk. I don't want to just blow through it, right? And that's why I really love this game, because there's a difficulty for everyone, or there's a difficulty for how you want to approach it. For me, you can do higher difficulties if you want that challenge. Suicide mission if you want to go nuts. But coming home from work, when I just want to play solo, for me, playing on the fourth level, challenging difficulty, it is just right in the sweet spot for me where it's still challenging enough. You're not getting, you know, you still have to think about what you're doing. You still have to be mobile and you have to be careful. You can still get kind of overwhelmed or outgunned. It's challenging enough where you can take them down. As long as you're smart about it, keep moving. It can be 
pretty manageable. Maybe you'll lose a life or two, and sometimes that's kind of the way to play it. Sometimes I'll go into a base knowing I probably won't get out of it, but as long as I get the fabricators down, I'll be good. And I know that there's you know, pushback against the nerfing of guns, which I do agree. You know, it's a PvE game, so it's like, why are they making these kind of nerfs? But, you know, it's one of those things that's out of my control. I, it's not my game to make, and I still enjoy it for what it is. And I've changed the different guns and weapons, stratagems I've used. When I was playing more of the bugs, I was doing the railgun and the bubble. And then... For a while, I liked the Eruptor Rifle. I liked the Shotgun. But now, the Tenderizer is solid for me. And even though it's not very useful so much, I started playing with the Jetpack again. And even though the Star Wars Battlefront is like a way better use of the Jetpack, just that gameplay-wise, but that's Battlefront. This is Helldivers. And the jetpack is still fun for me, so I play with it. I do that, the airstrike, and an EMS mortar. It's my meta. Don't get me wrong, everyone loves a good 500k. The 500k is still super cool, but the airstrike does what I need the 500 to do in most instances. I get more of them, and the ground it can cover I just find it more useful in my gameplay. That was what was fun, is finding what stratagems work for your style of play. It's funny where one of my friends, he loves the gaff and he likes the smoke grenade. He'll, he'll switch between using those and they do offer different strategic uses. I don't know, you know, it, it'll be interesting where it all goes because I would like to see more guns that are viable. The Eruptor Rifle now, I, I wouldn't use. Like it, I need crowd control, and that gun just doesn't do it. But, you know, that's just kind of the nature of the guns, the, the gameplay of it. And it definitely depends if you're playing with yourself, solo, versus in a squad. Because, uh... The Eruptor Rifle, I could maybe work with that if I was playing in a squad of friends that I knew. You know, there, there's a way to play with it. But if I'm playing solo, I need to be able to defend myself, to manage crowds, so on and so forth. That's why I play with the setup I play. Anyway, Helldivers 2. Put so many hours into it. And also... I have not put any more money into it than buying the game. All the war bonds I've earned by playing and finding the super credits in-game. I haven't been playing as much because there's a lot, so I need to farm a little bit more before I can earn it. First time I've had to do that with a new war bond. That's just because there are so many games and so little time, which definitely been feeling that a lot more this year. Yeah, just life, work, everything. It's kind of crazy. It's sort of why there's a, there's a new consistency to my channel. You know, the weekly format, it was just kind of drying me up creatively. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. We're talking about games that I've been playing, right? Let's stick to that. So yeah, Helldivers 2. I love that I can play it solo or with friends, and if I want to, randos. But it's just, every time I boot it up, it's when you get through a mission, you just feel good, which is what you want in a video game, right? You want to enjoy it, and I certainly enjoy it. Helldivers 2. This next game, I never expected it to come to PlayStation because it was made by Xbox. Who would have thought 
Sea of Thieves would come to PlayStation. What I love about this game is it can be really chill. You can just be playing music, go fishing, go scavenging, and then it can turn chaotic where you're running for your life, you know? So yeah, Sea of Thieves is just a lot of fun in this way. Now, I'll admit, you know, you're gonna have to kind of learn the world a bit. And at first, playing, I ran into, you know, toxic players. There was just this negative energy of playing it at first that I just didn't like. And it's kind of why I went to Safer Seas to start out. But once you reach the level where you can sell at the souvenir, at the sovereign, souvenir, at the sovereignty lady, being able to sell all your loot in one location, it's really hard to go back to the safer seas. I wouldn't even mind if it was still the same payout, because I think it's like, I think you get like 30% of the gold you would normally make, or even less maybe. But you would have to bring it to each vendor to sell it to the correct ones, right? That kind of thing. So it just takes up more time, get less money, and you can't progress past level 40 anyway. So, again, there's, it's, if I'm playing Safer Seas, it's literally, little, literally just to like chill out go sailing by myself without worrying about getting any of that disrupted. That said, they did the Golden Glory Weekend, which I made a video about, and that changed it for me. And I gained a new perspective. In Sea of Thieves, I am not the main character. I am not the almighty unstoppable force in sea of thieves i am trying to fly under the radar get that loot try to avoid conflict because i'm not very good at it, especially not solo especially when i did missions where you do the gold vaults so you find a piece of the map three pieces of the map put them together and then you get a key to unlock the vault and there is an adrenaline to doing all that, getting to the vault, getting all the loot. And there's a lot of loot in the vault, from the vault to your ship. And that adrenaline of like, get it all, get it all and go. So I like that. Understanding my role in that game was key. I would get sunk here and there lose my loot but that's sort of that's what it is sea of thieves so many games so little time but i definitely want to go back to sea of thieves uh it's fun to explore and also once i learned you can adjust your settings this is a ramble so i'm okay if i'm jumping around right I, I like the sniper rifle. I'm trying to think of what they call it. The eye of reach. Moving from enemy to enemy and it just, I like the range and I like the power of it, but it felt so slow. And then lo and behold, you go into the settings and you can bump that up. Game changer. Now it felt actually viable. Being able to move it at a speed, fast speed, being able to take down enemy, reload, adjust, take him down, changed it all for me. So cool. So again, yeah, I like my role in that, knowing that I probably won't win a battle. I need to run. I know that there are a lot of people that hate people who run. If I'm going to lose a battle, why would I fight it, right? Although sometimes you have to because they sneak up on you and you don't have a choice. You try to fight back. 
I'm not very good at it, so I end up losing. Say la vie, right? I will say though, there was an exciting night. Me and a friend hopped on to play, and we were in a sloop. We saw another sloop getting chased by a brig, so we decided to help them. And we did the, we were circling around, taking them out, and at the end, you know, we all met up and got on our boats, got to land, sold the loot they needed to. They gave us a few tricks, uh, a few tips about the game, because it was kind of early on when we were playing. So there were cool moments like that. You know, we had the toxic ones, the bad ones, the really good people. So that was what was really interesting about Sea of Thieves. Just the the high and the low of the players. You know, some of the toxic to really cool. So for better or worse, that's Sea of Thieves kind of shows you people's nature. And another game I've been playing this year that has been pretty consistent ever since they made no build mode, a permanent mode, of course, talking about Fortnite. And this new season, this newest season, the launch of it, that first week, and I know it was polarizing, for me, it was so much fun. The cars, what I loved is from the minute you stepped on foot, stepped foot on the island to the end, whether you got eliminated 28th or if you won, it was chaotic from the moment you stepped down to the end of the match. That was so much fun. Such a breath of fresh air into what Fortnite was for me. And I know Again, it was polarizing. People don't, didn't like it. And hey, I mean, ultimately they won because I felt like it changed. They added things, took away things, nerfed things. And just the other week we were playing, and, you know, it feels like regular Fortnite again, which isn't necessarily bad, but I was just, I just thought the launch of this new season was so much fun. I thought it was so different. But, you know, Fortnite is the kind of game that it's fun to just play with friends. Hop on. You know, obviously the goal is to be the last squad standing. And definitely from years of playing multiplayer, I would like to win. But a lot of times you won't. And so it's just about having fun with friends. Having fun gameplay moments, funny moments. Things like that. So for that, Fortnite is still a good time. Somehow, Lego Fortnite returned. So Lego Fortnite obviously was a thing. And then they released a Star Wars uh, edition. Not DLC, but whatever. A, a Star Wars experience in the Fortnite, Lego Fortnite. So now you can get a lightsaber. And when we were playing it, when I was playing it, Lego Fortnite, I thought, oh man, you just need a lightsaber. Because lightsabers make everything better, right? So they gave us that. So of course, being a Star Wars fan, they had the uh, battle pass for Lego Fortnite to unlock these different Lego builds. So of course I bought it. And that was fun. So it really hooked me back into playing it. And the new Star Wars editions were so much fun to go back into and play. And then now we have Star Wars themed things we can build in Lego Fortnite. I had already done all the things, you know, essentially you want to build up a village in the woods, then in the desert, and then in the frostland. And I had done all of that. Technically, like twice. But now I'm starting to build up very slowly a Star Wars village. And admittedly, another thing, that's like the theme of this video. Too many games, 
too little time. I, I've put a few things in place, not 100% sure how I want it to be laid out. I'm not a designer by any means, so it's, it's not going to be fantastic looking, but it'll be mine. And now that I can build these Star Wars villages, that's really cool. So let me know if you're interested in that, because maybe you can entice me to jump back and do it more. Uh, but yeah, Lego Fortnite and Star Wars, a beautiful match. Well, Lego Fortnite and Fortnite are free to play. Let's talk about another free to play Star Wars game. I'm talking about Star Wars Hunter. Yes, I do still have a Nintendo Switch. I don't play it as much, but I definitely still play it. And because this game is mostly a mobile game, but also on Switch, and not coming to PlayStation, I decided, well, why not? Give it a try. Free. And look, it's nothing to ho write home about, but, and it's just Star Wars enough in feeling. It's okay. It's kind of fun. The best part is that the matches are pretty quick, you know, two to three minutes, and it's, you know, not super demanding, it's not sweaty. If you're sweating in this game, you got issues. Star Wars enough, and it's free. So there you go. Well, now that we've talked about games with a lot of micro transactions, I didn't even mention that in Sea of Thieves, I put a little bit more money and then... I would probably like to admit there's a game that gives regular updates for free with zero microtransactions and it's good I'm talking of course about no man's sky <sighs> obviously being a star wars fan sci-fi the idea of getting into a spaceship flying into the universe landing on a planet and exploring that planet being able to do that, get back in your ship, go back into space, and do it again. I love that. So I have a playlist with plenty of No Man's Sky videos. I'm working on a few more as well. So if you're interested, you should subscribe because those will be coming out. But yeah, with this update, the worlds, they were focused more on environmental updates different wind patterns and effects like that. And I gotta say, it's really, really awesome. I feel like No Man's Sky has been awesome for a while. So we just keep getting more cool updates. The exciting thing about it is now with their new game, Light No Fire, even though it's more fantasy, I'm more of a sci-fi fan than fantasy. Nevertheless, I'm excited for this one, just to see the world building of that. What, what are the possibilities of that? Certainly from how No Man's Sky launched and the redemption arc and all the updates after that, the lessons they've learned, what they're putting into that. Yeah, I'm excited for Light No Fire. Absolutely. So yeah, it's always fun to go back to No Man's Sky. And this was Worlds Part 1. So what's Part 2 going to do? I don't know, but I will definitely check it out. So these next set of games, I just want to briefly talk about. I don't have a whole lot to say about them. I jumped back in randomly to Chivalry 2. I don't quite know why, but, you know, it's in my library and re-downloaded it. And it is still a fun time. Admittedly, I didn't play it too long after that, but if you haven't tried it, it's just bombastic fun. You know, you play as a knight or whatever, so you grab a sword, grab an axe, slash away. They have big battles, 40 player battles, 64, 64 player battles. It's just good fun, you know. It's not very ASMR friendly bloody, brutal in, in ways like that. But 
certainly worth checking out if you haven't. Now, I've made four videos of this on my channel, which is crazy because it feels like I've done more. I made a playlist for it. I'm talking about Cloud Punk. And now it's been a while. Gosh, I don't even know how long. They did a PS5 update, which essentially was the PC, what the PC players have already been playing. You know, obviously better graphics, smoother, but they also have first person driving or flying, whatever. You're in the hover car and it is such a beautiful game. If you love cyberpunk type of games, you have to check out Cloudpunk. The rain sound, just walking around that world, it's just so nice and wonderful, even though the story is not so nice and wonderful as most cyberpunk games are like that. But I love that game, it's beautiful, Cloudpunk. I definitely wanna go back into it again, the theme of the night. So many games, so little time, but oh, I love Cloudpunk. Another cyberpunk game that just kind of came out called Dead Link. It's a first person shooter roguelite. So you battle through levels, level up your character, your weapons, beat a boss, go to the next stage. But if you die, you start all the way over and do it all again. I'm starting to hit a wall with it. It just kind of came out, so there's still more time and, and energy to put into it. But it's definitely a game where it's based on like movement. You move it around the map and the levels to stay alive and to get taken as little damage as possible, taking enemies down as quickly as possible, that sort of thing. I just feel like... Uh, it doesn't quite have the fidelity and it's not like a fair comparison or anything but like Risk of Rain 2 just is such a great game but the the movement in that the fidelity the shooting it all works this one feels just a little bit clunky it's still fun I still like it it's still good it's just not quite just not quite there which is a shame because there's, there's a lot of cool things about it and I definitely like some of the movement and the shooting you know once you kind of figure it out a little bit more it is more fun so dead link check it out if you like roguelikes uh, you know for me like if you've liked severed steel returnal both games I've played on this channel yeah dead link it's worth checking out just because it came free to PlayStation Essential, I decided to give Crime Boss a chance. Long story short, play Payday 2. That's the better game. When I was playing that, even though I haven't played Payday 2 that much, when I was playing it, I was like, well, if I'm going to play this, I would rather just play Payday 2. So there you are. The next one up is Avatar. Now, Avatar, I actually really enjoy this game. I progressed through a decent amount in the beginning, but it's one of those games where if you step away from it and you come back to it, relearning the controls and the map and how it all works just takes a little bit more time, so it's really hard to get back into. And now at this point, I feel like I need to start over if I do it or I really have to put more time into relearning everything. And I absolutely want to, I would love to, but back to the theme of the night, your ASMR friend. So many games, so little time, but I actually do enjoy that it's, while it is Ubisoft, I know, Ubisoft, it's actually more focused on exploration, I feel. The combat is still okay, but for me, it's fun exploring Pandora, you know, even though Avatar is a weird franchise. I, I don't feel like anyone is like, oh, Avatar. But I like it. I enjoy it. Going to Avatar in the theater is awesome. So it, it's a fun game. I just, I don't 
don't know if I'll ever get back to it, to be honest. I would love to, but it's actually a better game than I was expecting. Now, this is random, but I wanted to bring it up. A game I liked when I played the demo, Dredge. Now, Dredge, to me, just feels like such a great Switch game. This might not make sense, but if, if you own a Switch and you own a console or a PC, there are certain games that are just... I think better suited when you're playing the Switch. Uh, for me, I went 100, you know, I got the Switch Lite, so I'm 100% handheld when I play the Switch. And it just feels like such a good Switch game. But then it came free to PlayStation. But, again, I would rather play it on the Switch. But now that it's free on the PlayStation, I will never buy it on the Switch when it's free on PlayStation but I probably won't play it because I'd rather play it on the Switch. It's a conundrum that your ASMR friend built for himself. But who knows? There might be a time, maybe a sick day or something that brings me to dredge. Or maybe if it goes on a really good sale on the Switch, because it is still on my wish list, maybe I'll pick it up. Maybe I'll bite that bullet. Lord knows I've spent more money on games than I need to. The game I'm playing in 2024, the very game that launched me into making YouTube videos, Cyberpunk 2077. I have often referred to it as my home away from home. Uh, nowadays when I make videos and I come back, I always reference it because it does. It feels like I'm coming back home when I play that. It's such an immersive world. I love Night City. Walking around that, exploring that, parkouring, getting up to places you shouldn't. I love doing nothing in that game. And then when the Phantom Liberty DLC came and it changed up the gameplay, I was actually enjoying the gunplay now not that it wasn't it was okay I would do it before but they really revamped it and running from the cops was is awesome in Night City in Cyberpunk so yeah I will always return to that game I'm working on another video for it as well but now that it, it has such a sentimental value to me when I go back there, it's definitely for more of my closer to heart type of videos. And even though I do, I mean, I have one that I have ready for all of you with no commentary, still like walking or background type of videos. Because in a way, I'm still sharing that experience with you. And I love being able to do that, bringing you into that world. Whether you play it currently or you played it past or you haven't played it at all but you enjoy watching my content which that would blow me out of the water that's amazing yeah i just i love i love sharing my time with all of you in cyberpunk so i will continue to do that so stay tuned to the channel for more videos from cyberpunk this next game i've lost way more time than I ever thought I would. I really thought, I'll check this out. It's probably okay. I played games similar, similar to this in the past and they didn't stick. But this one pulled me in and 200 hours later, here we are talking about the first Descendant. I mean, okay, I checked it out because it's a great price free. Of course, there are very high on the monetization of it, but the gameplay is fun. The shooting, the gun variety, it just hooks you. And because certain missions, most of the missions are pretty quick, it's easy to jump in and out of, and you're constantly grinding away, so, you know, I come home from work and six hours later, time for bed. Oh, I've been 
doing just nothing but the first ascent. It's kind of crazy how how much played that game. Like, you ever see the videos of elder people at casinos and they're just plugging away, pulling those slot machines? Eventually, you get to a point where that's what the first ascent it is. You're just chasing higher numbers. Oh, this gun. I already have this gun, but oh, but this gun has 12. Thousand DPS, but this one has fifteen thousand. Oh, but well, this it, the mini. It's less recoil and better ATK. There are so many components to it that at first it's a little bit overwhelming, and there's a lot of inventory management which I really don't like. But once you understand what you want, what you don't want from it, you know, just it becomes just another click click and they do have a good way to get rid of your junk you can do it with much more efficiency so i appreciate that i have technically beat it i've got to the hard levels and that kind of like resets it in a way so that's been fun but yeah it so many hours wasted not wasted just <laughs> gone playing that game because it does the guns feel good trying new ones the descendants have different powers so i've unlocked four without buying them uh, and the variety of them feel really cool and when you do the i forgot what they're called but the wave you know defeat 10 waves of enemy missions when you do that when everyone else has a different descendant, the way it all works together, oh, it just feels so good. It's so much fun. Those are my favorite ones. They're a little bit reminiscent of those late night Call of Duty zombie sessions I used to have with either myself or my friends back in the day. So playing it solo or with friends now, first descendant now, yeah, it kind of brings those feelings back. So that's why it's fun. Everything feels good. But back to the first game we started this video with. Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2. Every mission you play. You will get at least two or three. Like cinematic moments. Or funny moments. If you're playing with friends. You know it's a different story with randos. If you're playing with dumb people. Who kill you. Because they don't know what they're doing. That's a different story. When you're playing with friends and you accidentally kill them or yourself, it's funny. It's fun times. And so many times playing Helldivers, you, you want to like record those encounters because there's so many just cool, funny moments. Some that I will definitely show on screen right now. But right now. And the first descendant doesn't necessarily have that, but that's because it's more of once you you get through the entirety of the mission. Like it feels good. You still feel good after those enemy encounters. But going back to Hell Divers after playing the first descendant really makes you appreciate what Hell Divers is doing for me personally. Just the gameplay, the gunplay, the loop of it, it's just so top tier for me. Because again, of the just enough of a challenge, not frustrating, not where it feels like the game is overpowering you. Unless you're playing solo on a hell dive, then yeah, I mean, that's, you're playing in the impossible task. But if you have a squad that knows what they're doing, and getting through a hell dive or when we play like the suicide mission when you extract you really feels awesome again back to the the action movie you feel like rambo you just you conquer so that was my asmr ramble about games i've been playing in 2024
Let me know in the comments below. What have you been playing this year? Anything new or cool that you've been playing? Or what's the five-year-old game you've been playing? I didn't even mention I jumped back into Deep Rock Galactic yeah. a little bit. It's still an awesome, fun, cool game. Let me know, because I'd be curious. Maybe I'll check them out. Maybe I've played them too. But I'd be interested to know. And remember to be kind to yourself and be well to others.